Yeah, that's the SMP running in real time. To be honest, I don't really like the SMP, but more about that and why I publish it anyway at the end of this video. This is a tutorial for the SMP. I recommend watching the demo video first. It is linked in the description. So, as explained earlier, the SMP is just an 8 bit processing unit with a 16 bit address bus. You could of course just hook up 64 kilobytes of memory to this address bus, but you can also use the range to let the SMP interact with other devices. For example, in the demo I had, the first 256 bytes are hooked up to a modded memory block over here. And the 16 bytes after that are mapped to various commands on the display. This works with the address selector module found on every SMP device. It controls which addresses enable or disable the connected components via these switches. The upper row of switches specify which bits need to be in a specific state, and the lower bits specify what state those bits should be in for the component to be enabled. Then the memory and the display always know when the computer wants to use them. For example, here is an SMPU that was hooked up to 256 bytes of timer memory and 64 bytes of spot RAM. If you want to configure the spot RAM to use the first 64 bytes of memory, we have to turn on all but the six least significant switches of the upper row. And to hook up the 256 bytes of timer memory, we have to turn on the most significant 8 bits of the upper row, and also the most significant 8 bits on the lower row. Specifically, we're saying that all of these bits need to be in a specific state. And that state is that they all need to be turned on. This means that the time memory will only be functioning if the computer is trying to access an address in the last 256 bytes. Now for this tutorial, we're going to be using a simpler setup with just a bit of spot RAM. And the advantage of only having one type of memory is that you don't need to do any fancy memory mapping. If the computer is trying to access an address that's out of range, it will just be wrapped around back to the beginning. This is actually important for some behaviors with the stack, but we won't be using that in this tutorial. So we can just leave all of these switches turned off. This means that the spot RAM will always be enabled. Next up, we need to grab the assembler. Um, as you can see, I wrote the entire program for the demo from earlier in this assembler, and it's quite long and complicated, um, but we're going to keep it simple today. When you open up the assembler for the first time, it will load this simple demo program. It simply reads a byte from one location to the other. How does this work? Well, the first thing that is important to realize is that uh, these numbers on the left, they are line numbers, they are not addresses. Over here on the right, you can see the compiled outputs. It also specifies what's, what each byte actually means. So over here, you can see that the ADR instruction and the read location argument for that instruction take three bytes in total. Specifically, first the ADR instruction, then read location the higher half, and then read location the lower half, because of course that's an address, so it's going to be 16 bits. Then with the LDA instruction, which is just one byte, and then again with ADR for write location, so ADR, and then a different address, then we store over there, which is again just a single command, single byte, with a halt instruction, and then we have the read location. As you can see, uh, this is a label. Uh, anything with a uh, double colon at the end is a label. And what this does is every time I say at read location, it's going to paste in the address of the byte that comes right after the label. So as you can see, the read location is on address 9, and so is the byte that comes after. And if you quickly look in here, you can see that this binary data is a 9. So read location is on address 9, so when we call ADR with at read location, it will put a 9 there. Same goes for write location, except of course that it's going to be a 10 over here because it's one byte later. Oh yeah, also notice these labels that don't take up any actual memory in the address space. They're just there for our convenience. If you want to get a full list of all of the instructions that the computer has, go to this documentation link. It will open up this public Google spreadsheet, which I've been using to make and document the SMPU. So as you can see, there's a full list of all of the instructions and a quick explanation of what they do. There's also some other stuff over here, but some of this is outdated, so uh, 
just stay with the instruction set. The instruction set is the most important for you as a developer. You also may notice some other buttons. Uh, export to Vincent's memory, we'll uh, show this later. First, I'm going to show the emulator. Um, because um, Nick now, a member of my Discord server, made an entire emulator for this computer. Um, so what you have to do is restart the emulator and then just press auto clock. And uh, it's, it, this is a very quick program, so it stops immediately. If you press on this info button, you can see what is in this memory block. Uh, and as you can see, uh, all of this data kind of, uh, all of this data correlates to the stuff you can see in the compiled memory over there. And you can see that address 9 contains a 12, and the computer copied it over to address 10, which now also contains a 12. So if you restart the emulator again, you can see it's back to 0, and uh, auto clock, and then it's back to 12. You can also run one clock cycle at a time with this button over here. Let's now copy this to the SMPU and see if it works. Now to do that, you can do it with Spotcom memory, um, because it's relatively easy, because you can just uh, flick the switches. Um, but this carriage is in the way. So I'm going to show you a quick trick to solve that. Um, here is the program counter. Just increment it a few times with this button. You can also just press it to hold it down. To, you can also just press it to increment it a bunch. And now we want the program counter to be the actual output for the 16-bit address bus. So just press this button here for that. So this selects the program counter to be the current output instead of like the RAM address or the stack pointer. Uh, and now we have easy access to all of the switches so we can enter our program. Okay, so that was a relatively small program, so it's not too hard to enter in here. Of course, the entire map is upside down because zero starts here and then the address go up as we go further away. Whilst in the compiler, this is of course the other way around. This is the value 12 that we'll be copying over. It'll be copied from this address over here to this one back here. Um, if you want to start the computer, just press this button. Um, it will also reset the computer before actually starting the program. And that's our program working. Let's now make something else in the assembler. If you look through the documentation, you may notice that there is this increment uh, instruction. Um, so you can ch check out the registers over here and see that we have a counter register that can increment and decrement. Um, this is handy sometimes if you want to use some loops, um, because there's also a jump instruction, uh, jump zero, that only jumps if the counter is set to zero. Um, also jump counter if it's not set to zero, it's a kind of inverted version of that. Um, so let's quickly make a loop with the counter that will uh, loop about five times, let's say. So first of all, we can just delete everything that we've got. Next, we need to use a constant load queue. This is just a uh, handy instruction to get a constant value from program memory into a register. So we'll use CLQ, and then we need to specify a value to put in there. Let's just say five. Um, that's all we need to initialize for our loop, really. Uh, so now we can just uh, paste down a label, loop. If you put any spaces at the beginning of a line of code, it, those will be ignored. So you can use indentation in whichever way you want. Um, next up, we need to call the decrement uh, instruction. So as the documentation specifies, the decrement instruction will decrement the queue register. And we want to kind of keep repeating this loop while the counter is not set to zero. Um, so we can use jmpq for that. So jmpq. However, do not forget that every time you use anything with a RAM address, so loading or storing data in RAM, or jumping to an address, you need to use ADR to make sure that you're selecting the correct address. So we're going to do ADR at loop. One thing, one mistake that you're going to be making a lot is that you're going to put JMPQ, then the loop, so a commando, and then the instruction, then the address where you want to do that. And then it's going to give error to many arguments um, because JMPQ doesn't expect an argument. So you do ADR, your address, and then the instruction with that address. And of course, if the counter is now at zero, we didn't jump, which means that we exited the loop and we are now over here, and we can just call halt. All right, now that's our uh, quick memory done. Now we could put this program into the computer manually like before, 
But here I'm going to be demonstrating uh, how to use this export to Vinslink's memory function. Uh, Vinslink's memory is a modded memory block that's part of one of the many mods I use. Go to the Discord server in the description and click on the channel Scrap Mechanic mods I use. And there you get like a, a nice list of, of the quality of life mods for Scrap Mechanic logic. Um, but to make sure the computer can actually use this, we have to hook up the modded logic to the computer. So let's first quickly do that. Step one, disconnect any memory you already have. Uh, step two, find the modded memory. And... Step three, connect it. Um, whenever you're connecting a module, um, the arrows of the logic gates kind of indicate in which direction the connection has to go. Uh, again, we can use quality of life mods to make our life easier. So let's use the parallel connect tool to quickly do the rest. Again, if you're interested in those mods, please check out the link in the description. There I have a long list of quality of life mods that I highly recommend for any scrap mechanic logic fan to use. This here is a modded memory block made by Vinsling. And it can actually read data from a file on your computer. So what you need to do in Assembler is you press export to Vinslink's memory. This will download a file. We'll go to this file. And we're going to we're gonna press cut. Then you need to find your Steam folder. Um, it's going to look something like this. Go to Steam, Steam Apps, Workshop content, the game ID of Scrap Mechanic, which looks something like 387, and then the game ID of the logic mod, which looks something like 2817. So this is the file path you'll have to go to. If You're probably on Windows, so this first part is going to look different. We're going to go to Steam, CMAPS, Workshop, Content, something with 38, something with 2817. Then here we can find the data.json. So if you just paste in our file, it's going to give us an overwrite warning, which is good. Just press replace. So now all of the new data is in this file. Now we should be able to go back to Scrap Mechanic and press U for upgrade. And on the left, it's going to say RAM imported file. Now it's a bit of a bug at the moment. Uh, sometimes you just have to quickly press this button for it to properly load. And after that, our program should be in the SMPU. Okay, so now all we have to do is press start. And you can actually find the counter over here. So as you can see now it is five, then it's four, then it's a three, then it's a two, then it's a one, and then it's a zero, and the computer stops. So why do I hate this computer? Let me explain. It basically boils down to the ADR instruction. Luckily, in, in this program, we don't have to use the ADR instruction a lot. But in any more pro complicated program, like the demo from earlier, you can see that like almost half of the instructions are ADR instructions. And all of these take up three bytes of memory, which means that the computer needs to read from memory three times, which is a lot. And this makes the computer relatively slow. So most of my hate with the computer boils down to the ADR instruction is slow. Any sort of interaction with memory involves doing ADR a lot. Luckily, most computers have a bunch of registers, which are meant to be a faster alternative to RAM. And the SMP has a few registers. However, there's only the A and B registers that you can really use for general purpose storage, for just like temporarily storing a number. And even then, if you want to do any sort of calculation, you're going to be you're going to have to overwrite values in the A and B registers. So data kind of becomes a kind of hot potato because you need to get it out of the computer back into RAM as quickly as possible because all of these registers are a bit overused. But it's hard to get all of that data in and out of RAM all of the time because you have to use ADR all of the time. Let me show you what you need to do if you want to read an address from RAM manually. So you do like add um, address h zero and address l zero. Say we just want these to be like variable numbers, like variable numbers, right? 
So 23, 45, whatever. What we have to do to load this address into the H and L registers is do ADR at address. So get the first one into the A register, then move that from the A register into the B register because there's no uh, command to directly get something from memory into the B register. Then we need to do ADR at address L because there's no simple um, address increment instruction. Then we need to do LDA again. Then we do LDL to get that into the L register and then STB to get the value from B back into the A register and then LDH to move that value back to the H register. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight instructions. Oh, um, oops, syntax error. If you're defining a label, you don't begin with an at sign. You begin with, you end with a double colon like that. Uh, STB, uh oh, did I misremember? Oh, yeah, there isn't even a store B instruction. What you're supposed to do is you swap, which just swaps A and B all in one instruction, which I thought was very useful. And then you don't really need the B register anymore. Well, yeah, no. Oh, yeah. And of course, the joke is that all of this actually takes up, uh, what is it? 12 bytes in memory because this is zero indexed. Yeah, 12 bytes. So it needs to read 12 bytes from memory, actually 14, because it's also writing those, just to put two bytes of memory into the H and L registers. Th this is a pain. This is gonna make the computer very slow anytime you want to like do fancy stuff with pointers or whatever. And the joke is you can't, uh, the computer has functions for like subroutines. It has a stack and a subroutine call and return instruction, but you couldn't make a subroutine for loading an address into the H and L registers because the return instruction overwrites H and L in the process of returning. It's awful. So if I hate the SMPU so much, why am I publishing it? Well, that's because the last computer I published was the SMC2 and the SMPU is still much better than the SMC2 just because it has, you know, much more memory. And I want to make a better computer, but for that, I need to have made computers in the past. I learned a lot from the SMPU and by finishing it and actually testing it out, I've confirmed like a lot of the suspicions I had about what parts of the SMPU are poorly designed. And last but not least, I want to learn how to make good tutorials. To be fair, I'm kind of rushing this tutorial, so I hope you still like it. Please give feedback in the comments and yeah, subscribe to get updates about the new computer I will be making soon. So let's speed up the computer again so that we can actually see that it's doing something funny. And um, yeah, so anyways, I'm CodeMaker4. I still don't really have an auto yet. So um, bye, I guess. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. Please subscribe.